Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another one of my interview episodes where over the years, every now and again, I find inspiring people and I bring them to you and I share them with you. This is Francisco Bricio. We're currently in Mexico. I'm actually a guest of his here in Mexico. And this is a very, I say important, this is a very significant video for me to share with you or a moment to share with you. It's because Francisco is one of my dearest dearest friends uh, him and his wife are friends of Jules and myself but Francisco is also a mentor to me I don't think I officially have ever called you a mentor no, no. Uh, but Francisco I, I I look to for life inspiration and and we chat about life a lot don't we yeah, we, we share that no? yeah we, we, share both sides. we share the same similar values yes. and we're uh, we're obsessed about growing and being better every day and uh, Francisco is an extraordinary man on his own and that's why I look to him for inspiration and education and he's an extraordinary uh, father and a family man to three beautiful daughters he has an amazing wife he's an entrepreneur a very successful entrepreneur he's a physicist he's obsessed about reading and learning and growing he's the president of the Mexican Mahler Association if you know who Gustav Mahler is uh, that's another obsession of his he's obsessed about music uh, he's just yeah you're an extraordinary man <laughs> I don't you. think that it's uh, very often that you find uh, people like yourself which is why I gravitate to you very naturally uh, you know we well it takes time no it takes time and he's trying to grow every day mm -hmm. little by little in different areas everything that that uh picks your your attention or your interest not just to have interest but try to investigate more and learn more and and i believe that you end up loving whatever you know about it no uh, can you explain that I mean, for example, I mean, you go to a, a, a one of these beautiful museums that you see in Europe and you see a painting and you don't, you see it and you see a whole bunch of people, but you don't understand the painting. Mm. But when you learn what was behind the, the painting and what was the reason the painter was doing this and his story and the colors yeah. he's using and what they mean and everything, then just that same painting without changing anything on the painting, it has a different value. Yeah. You know? So actually, that's very, very true. I don't think uh, people look at it like that much. Like even a, a building, yeah. you can look at a building and see a building. Yes, yes, exactly. But once you understand the history, actually, let's talk about Mahler for a second. Yes. So Gustav Mahler is a famous conductor. He, he, he was a very famous conductor in, in the late uh, 1800s. Mm. And uh, I'm sorry, I, 1800s, yes. Mm. Uh, but he was also a... Uh, composer, he composed ten symphonies in a, in a time where um, musicians were more uh, people getting paid to compose, but he composed to to express his feelings. So that's what I really really like about Mahler. You know? Yeah, to go back to what you just said, you know, a lot. I, even I know based on the years that we've uh, got to know each other, and you've taken me to a what do you call it a Mahler symphony? Yeah, yeah. We we listen yeah. Mahler. And I was Mahler blown too. away by it. Yes. But some people are like, oh, they don't really like Mahler because exactly. Exactly. he doesn't like like uh, um, Mozart. He doesn't play these like exactly. almost predictable tunes. Well, the thing the thing is that before Mahler, I mean, he, he, uh, musicians were like like uh, uh, entertainers. Entertainers. I mean, it was you have the cook, you have the entertainers, and the entertainers were the musicians, and you paid musicians to compose music and to compose beautiful music. Mm -hmm. So if you want to make money, you have to compose beautiful music. And, and then all of a sudden, Gustav Mahler comes and he says, I, I'm, I already made a lot of money being a, a conductor, a director. And um, so I don't need to compose to anybody. I'm just going to compose to myself. Mm. And I'm going to express my feelings through the music. So Mahler goes up and down, up and down, but, but ups like and downs like crazy. Yeah. And, uh, and the reason is that he's just expressing what he's feeling. Yeah. So to understand Mahler, you need to understand what he's going behind mm. uh, his life. And that's what I, is really, really nice because first time you listen to Mahler is it's kind of strange, but when you have his biography and you are reading what he was going through, and then you listen to the music and you say, "Oh, this is this, this is this, this is this," yeah. and everything makes a lot of sense. Just exactly the same as the, as the painting I, I was explaining. Yeah. yeah, the whole music makes makes. See, sense. I'm even being inspired now <laughs> to look at things or to pay more attention to things and I guess in a, the simplest form 
uh, of what we're saying is don't judge a book by its cover. Oh, of course. Understand. Of course. Uh, you know, in, even people yeah. understand why people uh, conduct the way they conduct or conduct themselves the way they conduct themselves in life. Yeah. You know, there's a there's a reason for everything. Yeah. And the other thing that that music has really helped me a lot is. Uh, uh, music is one of those things that uh, makes you be less attached to to assets, to money, to things, mm. um, because mu music is the only thing that you listen to it, you experience music, you are fulfilled with music, and at yeah. the end you end up with nothing. I mean, nothing on your pockets, nothing, but only on your soul. And really fulfilled in your yes, heart and your yes, soul. Yes, exactly. So. Um, um, you you learn a lot about about that's music. very interesting because we've never spoken about this before and if you look at a lot of poor people not poor um, you know people that don't live with material things let's say like tribes yeah Amazonian tribes yeah. African tribes yeah, what yeah. do they do all the time they sing, dance they sing dance and sing yeah. all the time and yes. they're they're very happy yes yes yes, yes. Um, yes that's yes. very interesting yeah 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 you you get you get fooled I mean you your soul gets fulfilled with the yeah. with music you know so it's, it's I already knew um, you know I already knew before we did this interview that I need to not that I'm unhappy but I need to listen to more music because when I take the time to listen to music oh I just I feel amazing and especially now classical music because I'm getting into <laughs> it because of you yeah. but not just classical music anything that picks your attention I mean yeah. uh, if you see some a painting and and you see I mean this is this looks nice but mm. that, don't go back and just say nice. I mean, just go and check what's behind that, no? Mm. And, um, and that's what I usually do. In fact, I'm, it sounds crazy, but I have uh, the Wikipedia downloaded on my phone, so I can have the answers r right away. I see a nice building, and I try to see uh, what that, uh, who, who was the, uh, the, the architect and, and, it, yeah. and, and the other, other works of mm. this architect uh, and anything. I mean, I'm just curious. I'm very, very curious. That's one thing I believe. For you to have your best life, curiosity has to be at the oh, top. Absolutely, yes. Like yeah. you have to remain curious. curious yeah. Look at the happiest uh, humans in the world as children. Yeah. Because they're so curious all the time. Yes, yes. And yes. also, part of what I teach in my coaching and stuff is find meaning behind everything that you're doing. So, yeah, Wikipedia, everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's amazing. Another thing I want to talk about is. First of all, we we're already getting into the, the swing of things here and I wanted to do an introduction and I wanted to share with you how I met Francisco. Mm. And it's a very powerful story and the, you know, talking of meaning, the meaning behind it is massive for everyone here. So is it okay if I just take yes, yes, go ahead. a few minutes just to, to, yes, yes, to talk yes. to the, the, the guests or the audience? So in my life, I've very much been a yes man. Sometimes being a yes man has got me into trouble, but doing what I've done in my life has got me to exactly where I am today. And I'm very happy where I am, and I believe that everything in my life has happened the way it should happen. And about four, year, no, four years ago, four years ago. Four, now four years and three months ago, June 2015, I was last minute deciding to go to an event called Business Mastery. It's run by Tony Robbins. Uh, as you know, Tony Robbins has been my number one role model for like my whole life. And uh, Tony Robbins runs this event called Business Mastery and it's very expensive. I think it's like 10,000 US dollars. And I was deciding last minute whether to go or not. And I was like, oh, I can't really justify it. I don't need to go, but I want to go. And sometimes we fight between our need and want and scarcity and abundance. And I was like, you know what? I was like, put my hand on my heart. And I was like, I want to go to Business Mastery. So I went to Business Mastery. So I decided to show up. I made a decision to show up. Now remember that. Then in Business Mastery, Tony Robbins goes around, if you don't know, and he, and he does interventions yeah. and he talks to people one-to-one. -one. And he happened to talk to Francisco one-to-one. -one. And I thought, I want to connect with Francisco. I want to connect to them because I was just really doing coaching at the time. And I was like, maybe I can do some coaching with Francisco. So during the break, after Tony and Francisco had this intervention or this talk, I go to his chair 
and he's not there. So I leave my business card on his chair. Once again, I decided to show up. I decided mm -hmm. to get uncomfortable. And even though he wasn't there, I didn't walk away and say, oh, well, it didn't work out. I left, I was said to the person next door, to, uh, ne sitting next to him, chair, yeah. would you mind giving him this card? And I didn't know them, but that was Francisco's business partner. Anyway, long story short, I then I decide to stick my hand up on the last day. And I'm like, I want to have a one-to-one -one with Tony. And I keep my hand up and I keep my hand up and I keep showing up and I keep showing up and I have to do this because my arm's getting tired. And almost right at the end of the day, Tony goes, hey, and we have a little share. Francisco's taking pictures at the back because he decides that he wants to keep those moments for everyone that has a one-to-one -one with Tony. So Francisco comes to me afterwards and says, hey, got, I want to speak to you. And I say, yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, that was so funny. <laughs> and he said, oh, I've got a photo of, uh, of Tony Robbins. And I said, no, 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 I left you my business card. Anyway, so Francisco and I then had a Skype chat. And uh, I did some coaching with Francisco on, uh, on habits and mindset and stuff. And Francisco has uh, taken lots of different things from many people. And he went on a two-year journey with me, learning, yes. learning different stuff from me. And then we decided, look, I can't, you're, you're bigger than me now in these areas. I, I can't coach you anymore. And we just stayed very, very good friends. But the important message behind this is, if you didn't decide to fly all the way to, to London, to London to drag your business partner there. Yes. If I didn't decide to go to, to Business Mastery, even though I didn't need to go, I wanted to go, my heart said yes, my head said no. If I didn't decide to put the business card, stick my hand up, there's all these things that are actually synchronicities because they lead you to a beautiful moment. Yes, uh, yes, uh, exactly. and whether that was us meeting or us sitting here, uh, I, hope you t I hope you take inspiration from that to keep, that's why I always say it. I always say, it, just keep showing up. Mm -hmm. Because if you show up, something can happen and it might be four years down the line where we're doing this video. Right now, obviously with my accident, I've been in not a very good place physically and Francisco just wanted me to have some rest and recovery in beautiful Mexico because he knows how much we love Mexico and obviously he wanted to see us as well. So we've been in Mexico for almost two weeks. Yeah, almost. As your guest. And yes. I just want to say, I just want to say thank you no, again no, for welcome, having us. Welcome, you know, welcome. We've been I to, hope you like it. Uh, to a beautiful resort with your family. We've been to San Miguel. We've stayed in a beautiful hotel. We've had beautiful meals. We're just talking about life and laughing and it's truly been a, a special time. Now, that brings me on to the third thing that I want you to talk about. Okay. Which is, the reason why we're here is because Francisco gives so much. He really, you give more than most people. And Francisco, he, you know, he gives to people that he knows, he gives to friends, he's a philanthropist, he gives to charity, you've adopted three girls uh -huh. as well. Uh, first of all, can you tell me why this is so important to you? And then let's talk about how, because this is very powerful, yeah. how the more you end up giving, yeah, the more, the more things just keep coming I, to absolutely. you. Why is giving and why has it always been so important to you? Well, uh, the, the, everything started from uh, the fact that I was, I was um, how do you say, a, a child that was not desired by my parents. Um, not desired by your parents? My, 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 well, my father, especially my father. And, um, and, and I was always, always being rejected. And, but my mom decided that she, that she wanted to have me. <clears throat> and, uh, and I'm here. I mean, if mm -hmm. she hadn't decided to have me, I'll probably be somewhere else <laughs> the, f the fact is that uh, since very very young I, I grew up with this idea in my head to give opportunity to somebody you know the same yeah. way that my mother gave me the opportunity to live to give the opportunity to somebody in any ways no oh yeah. so your dad didn't want to have you yes and your mother decided to have you that's so correct. she gave you life that's correct so, so now you give life to other people. yeah it, it, it doesn't matter it can be uh, just by by a, a friendship it can be just by giving their money or giving my time or anything yeah. i mean we just try to give uh, the, the, to, so, to somebody and um uh but it's, it's kind of funny and tony robbie says says this but in in my case um uh, I, I i don't talk too much in fact this is probably the first time i'm talking publicly about that that I yeah I, I'm kind of philanthropist but I try to help anybody that I can see yeah. and um, uh, but the funny thing is that 
uh, without asking, every time that I give 100, I get like 1,000 back, mm. one way or another. Uh, either more businesses or an opportunity or, or, or meeting somebody. And, and, and for me, it's probably my best investment. And, and today, I still do it just because of the love of doing that. Uh, but I, I'm thankful of getting all those uh, perks uh, af afterwards. Um, which is really, really fantastic for me. No. You know, a lot of people talk about uh, the law of attraction. And, and would you say that, well, how much, how much of this, you being a physicist, yeah. how much of this is science? No, no, no. I'm, 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 I'm a physicist, so I, I, I believe in, in strong facts. Mm. Uh, I, I, just, I just think that, that at the end, I mean, we are all connected one way or another. Uh, and I know as a, in a spiritual way, but also as in yeah. a physical way, because the earth uh, uh, is the same. The air that we're breathing right now is the same air that, that was um, breathed by Jesus or, uh, or uh, Saddam Hussein. I mean, it's the same air. I mean, it's just one air. So we are part of exactly, exactly the same thing, uh, every, everybody. So we are all connected. And, um, and I do believe that if you do anything, anything for something, I mean, it's always going to be paid forward. I mm. mean, somebody, he's going to do good to somebody else and somebody else, and that eventually will go back to, back mm. to you. So it's, it's just a matter of just starting and kick the ball. First of all, um, I love what you just said, and we discussed, we talked about this before, I think in London once, that, you know, the air that you're breathing right now you know, because it's like in our atmosphere. It's only one atmosphere. It has been the same atmosphere. It's always been the same. So whether you believe in Jesus Christ, Prophet Muhammad, um, Buddha, whatever, or you know, you miss your great grand, great, 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 great grandparents, we're all breathing the same air. And I find that absolutely And not incredible. just the same air. I mean, and we you breathe in the same air. I mean, with I the same particles. Yes, exactly. Because everything is, exactly. what's the uh, word, transferred uh, or recycled. recycled? Yeah. It's the same air. It's just the same plant, same everything. So we are all recycled. I'm, I'm asking this for myself and for everyone else. How much, because look, if, I'm not going to talk about Francisco's success, but he's very successful and monetary, spiritually, uh, emotionally, connection wise. I mean, the guy travels the world, you're always on a plane. Um, how much would you say, honestly, would you say is giving a part of your own success? Oh, it's, it's part of it. I mean, it's, they are not two things. It's, it's all the same. It's the same. It's the same. And, uh, and not just me, also Lupita, my wife, she's, she's exactly the same as, as me. In different ways, but it's, it's the same. Mm. Um, but it's, it's part of us, it's just part of us. It's not, it's not something that we do consciously, we do it very unconsciously. You just do it, yeah. yeah we just do it. Giving unconsciously, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. And uh, you've given so much to us, to Jules and myself <laughs> and to me, and in terms of your time and energy and you know, inspiration, your love, who you, we call uh, Francisco and Lupita, our Mexican parents, <laughs> mama and papa, yeah. uh, just because we've become so close to them. Um, another thing that I've learned from you, obviously the reason, the main reason why I wanted to share Francisco with you is to, to meet one of my mentors, right? You know, an, another one of my mentors and teachers is Lisa Nichols. I've got a, a couple of other people, a guy named Daniel Priestley and Andrew Priestley. Pretty much right now, that's it. You know, and Francisco, that, these are the, you know, my, my four amigos almost, <laughs> or amigos and amiga. Mm -hmm. And um, one thing that Francisco really helped me with, because a lot of the times I just, we just talk. You know, I don't, I, we don't have sessions. Mm. Uh, we just talk a lot. Mm -hmm. And we talk about life. We talk about business, we talk about love, relationships. And once I was facing a real, just recently, I was facing a real challenge. And Francisco said to me, JP, I'd like to share something with you. I'd like to share with you a challenge that I once had in my business. Mm. And it was that you, your business, something went wrong and you were in debt of... I, 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 I did a very bad business and a very bad uh, decisions uh, in the past just to, uh, for not thinking, uh, not giving myself the time to think and trying to keep up with the speed of everything was going on. I mean, trying to compete with everybody else. Mm. 
um, which was a terrible mistake. And, um, and I was very stubborn and, and with this business and I end up um, in big debt, I mean millions. I'm not saying uh, dollars, dollars right? not yeah. pesos. No, millions, millions. Yeah. It was a lot of money. It was, it reached a point where I was worth uh, more dead than uh, than alive. So, uh, in one point, I mean, w for me, the decision was almost very, very easy, just to to be, yeah, to shoot myself and and, and try to see that my family will collect the money. It was uh, that that bad. It was it was really. Did that bad. actually cross your mind? Oh yeah, many times, many many times. Yeah. And uh, uh, but uh, I think I'm the living case where everything happens on the last try. Everything, everything in life happens on the explain? last try. You need to keep trying, keep trying, keep trying, because you don't know if the last try the next is the next one. Okay. So I keep trying and trying and trying, and 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 I remember I was. I mean, we, we didn't have anything to eat, and obviously now I eat enough. <laughs> but, <laughs> but we didn't have anything to eat, and and my daughters. Uh, we didn't want my daughters to know. We didn't want my parents-in-law to know. So, I mean, we did, did these tricks about uh, having my daughter saying, hey, do you, do you remember that girl in your school who is a very good friend of you? Do you want to go have lunch with them? And so we wow. keep uh, every day sending our daughters to eat with uh, their friends. And uh, on weekends, one day we will go to my father's and the other day with my father's-in-law yeah. uh, to eat. I mean, that was the only reason. We were, we were really, really bad. But I keep trying and trying and trying and trying. And this was in your about 40, right? Or 40s? Or I, I was exactly 40 years old. Yeah. I was exactly 40 years old. And um, um, so I, I didn't know what, what else to do, but I just keep trying. I, I knew that, that that I just keep trying and trying and trying. And until one point that my, my wife said, you know what, I think that you already gave gave it up. You gave it all. I mean, so you, should, you should quit. You should also learn how to quit. And I say, you know what? Let me do just one more try, one more phone call, and that will be it. And um, but I just try one more. So I make that phone call, and I didn't find the person that I was trying to reach. And and next day, this guy called me back saying, "Hey, I was trying to look for you, and if you what you do is exactly what I what I think of, uh, I have a, a a business proposition for you and." The rest is history. I mean, from there, I went from upside down to an all a different different level. Mm -hmm. um, but the fact is that you just not need to keep trying and trying and trying, not never and stop. And just to give um, people some more context, now you're at a point where literally opportunities are coming to you all the time. Oh, all having, the time. And you're having to push them. Yes, away, yes, right? yes. Now, I, I use my time very wisely to think about the business opportunities I get. I get business opportunities all the time. Yeah. Um, good business opportunities some that I just divert some others that that I I, I, I already have a, a, an institution that that foster these kinds of ideas that I think that are not ready yet but they eventually will um, but um, but yes that the other thing is that also you need to be focused you know mm. um, don't get distracted very easily uh, be curious, but don't get distracted because <coughs> distraction, that's, that's the, the best of our time. I mean, we get yeah. distracted by Instagram, by Facebook, by email, by anything. You, you just need to be focused. Even opportunities that are just opportunities. Oh, yeah. They're, they not, are, they're not right for they, you. They are like sirens. I mean, they are just uh, uh, calling you and, and you, you hear a lot of money here easily and then all your attention you is there way, and yeah. you, a good business. Uh, you neglect a good business and yeah. it goes sideways. Something really cool and very powerful that you just said that probably will uh, be very significant for people is, um, I'll say it in my words, you said just being busy doesn't mean oh, yeah. you'll be successful. Actually, Francisco, what led him to making the biggest mistakes of his life and being in millions of debt was him being so busy, busy yes. and not taking time to think. So and I was not present even with my family because I yeah, was so busy. Always busy all the Always time, busy, yeah. trying to find ways. Wait, wait, so wait. by you slowing down yeah. and working less yes. or, or taking more time to think about what you're doing, that made you more successful. Well, I don't think that I work less. I think I, I, I always grow, I, I always work very, very hard. Yeah, so what I mean is you, th you, uh, you take time to think about things rather yes. than being busy all the but time. But that, that's something that I learned from you. 
that that that's something that that you you have the credit for that because I was so busy that I didn't really have time to think and mm -hmm. I just needed to think and and you helped me out with these uh, rituals that I do very diligently in the morning so I wake up at five o'clock in the morning and from five to ten five hours are my five hours mm -hmm. and Lupita knows that she cannot talk to me nobody talks to me my business partner don't talk to me but those five hours I I do so my meditation to ten. Five to ten, I yeah. do my exercise, my meditation, my reading. I'm writing one book. I'm now starting with the second one. Uh, uh, oh, hang on. Where's your book, by the way? I uh, was meaning to ask in this video. Where's uh, your book? Oh, it's, it's on the editor right now. Really? Yeah. Okay, yeah. great. Okay, yeah. so your morning rituals. Yeah, yeah so I, I do all my morning Create rituals. Create space for yourself. And give my time. I mean, and, and one of the big, big part of the, uh, those five hours is just 30 minutes of thinking time. Yeah. You know? Just think, but not think randomly. Think about what what to do strategically. And very very strategically. Mm -hmm. So at 10 a.m., uh, nobody noticed that I haven't been in the office yet. But yeah. at 10, I already did my day, so you're I can stop there. You're on fire by that time. Uh, but yeah. at 10, I'm already finished. So mm -hmm. uh, here I am. Well, it's 10:27, and uh, I'm here. I, I have no problems uh, talking to you mm -hmm. because I already did. Everything that I had to do for today. Yeah, you said at breakfast that you've already had loads of calls. This yes, morning, yes, yeah. very early in the morning. Yeah. So, you know, with this story, I hope that what you take away from this is um, the power of perspective. It doesn't have to be Francisco's story, but for me, if I'm ever facing a, a challenge, it doesn't have to be a financial challenge. It can just be a business challenge. I don't have clarity, or this product isn't working, or my book launch failed. All I have to look at is how can I see this differently? And this is an example that we all have different strategies and different tools. Mm -hmm. This is a tool that I use for me. I use Francisco. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't abuse him, but I use him. <laughs> and I go, you know what? Francisco was in 40 million debt or whatever. Uh, he was, he drove across Mexico, right? This one thing he didn't say. He just drove and drove and drove until he reached a hotel. He was the beach. I mean, until they reached the ocean. I mean, yeah, there was till, no more. Till the Isla, 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 Isla Navidad. Navidad. And we just stayed, we've just stayed there. And Francisco just kept driving until he got to this place, went into a room and just put post-it notes everywhere and just started brainstorming. And yeah, so, so for me, when I look at any problem that I've ever faced, right? up until this point i don't know what life's gonna give me but i've never in my whole life faced a challenge like that no. so literally that dwarfs everything that i've been through mm. and i hope that if you're facing something uh, that's a challenge to you i hope that you can go wow i've never had to deal with that you know having suicidal thoughts being worth more dead than i am alive leaving money for my family and you know driving because you just keep driving because you don't know what to do and mexico is a big place yeah. right mexico is a damn big place you can drive for seven hours and get nowhere yeah um it's the power of perspective uh, it's very very powerful and keep trying i mean keep trying never uh, it's, Sorry, it's always yeah. on the last time and that's uh you know the last you said before the last thing you do might be the thing that changes everything exactly so you keep uh, need to keep trying there's this meme i'm sure you've seen it before on facebook and it's two people digging underground. Oh, yes, 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 uh, yes. And, the, and, and one the, is about to reach the goal. Yeah, yeah. and, the, and the, the one person above gives up and the other person keeps going. And, and, and all they, ha they have to do like one chip and they reach all the diamonds. Exactly. But the person wasn't willing to do that last little bit. Exactly. Uh, and that's why part of uh, uh, my uh, philosophy is never settle. Just keep going, keep going, keep going. The other thing is that that you uh, the fact the thing is to keep going, and sometimes yes, you can be digging on the wrong side, okay, mm. but you are learning, okay. Yeah. So I mean, you need to keep doing, keep trying, keep trying, keep trying because it's probably not this one, but it's the next one. But you need to keep trying. The the, the point is not the end; it's just the journey. I mean, mm. keep trying, keep trying, keep trying. Can I ask you a, a question, just something that you know I live by? And uh, you didn't know I was going to ask you this question. How important, because this is controversial, how important would you say it is to love what you do in business? Oh, it's, it's crucial. Uh, crucial. I mean, there's no way to yes, do right any. On, yeah. <laughs> there's no way to do any business if you don't love it. I mean, in fact, um, there are some businesses that sounds very interesting on the monetary side, but just 
the purpose or the meaning or the ways that they were doing to get the money were not in line with my values. Mm. So I just decided just to quit and sell. Sometimes very good, I mean, uh, financially good, but uh, but you need to love it. Otherwise, you cannot wake up at five in o'clock in the morning. Right? Yeah, willingly. Yeah, you need to be yeah. very excited to, to wake up every day. I mean, if you look at you know all the people in the world that have made you know billions you know yes you see the money yes you see them on the forbes list but what you also have to understand is like um warren buffett mm -hmm. right yes he's a great investor but he was reading papers when he was 12 years old yes w you know were were you that obs or are you that obsessed, obsessed about what you do that when you were a teenager you were reading you know financial reports mm -hmm. like that's crazy obsession you know, Elon Musk. Uh, there's so many examples of people that are uh, g that are geniuses, right? They're just living in their space, in their obsession, uh, that have managed to uh, make their lives uh, truly uh, incredible. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, I think that um, you know, and I've had some people in my life say, "Oh, JP, you know, you just this loving what you do thing is like stupid. Like you just have to get a job and no, no, stick no. it out and." And I, I've just always said, no, sorry. I, yeah. I don't care how many challenges I face. I will yeah. not uh, live a life or a purpose um, that I'm not meant to be living. That doesn't make my heart sing. For example, I mean, one of the things that I keep, I say to things that I hire to work with me is that there's only one rule. And only one rule. I mean, I'm not gonna you put- You mean when you hire people? When you hire people. Yeah. I, I, I don't worry, I, I don't, I'm not too worried about, uh, uh, from nine to five or eight to six or whatever. I mean, I don't care about anything, anything. The only thing that I ask is that they need, they have fun. Yeah. The, there's only one rule, to have fun. Because if you have fun, then you get focus. And if you get focus, you get results. And if you get results, you get the money. Yeah. So if you're not having fun, move on, no? Yeah. So if people is not happy working with me, they they better they they better move or or we move them. I mean, we need we only want yeah. people that are having fun. Now Francisco has got huge teams and huge people that amounts of people that he works with. I've only ever worked with two or three people at a time on my team, but I say the same thing. Uh, Amanda, Signa, even Jules. I'm like, if you're not happy being here, say so, yeah. because I cannot have you. That's the number one thing. Uh, the number one important thing is you have to enjoy or love being in. If you don't, let's change what you're doing or let's go our separate ways mm -hmm. because you have to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. There's so much inspiration to be taken from this video. Francisco, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Um, one more thing. I just want to encourage you all to, you know, Francisco has his own values. I have my own values. We oh, live yes. very similarly, similarly, similarly in life. I think that's a word. And, um, you know, it's very important to, you know, if you want to be successful, truly successful and fulfilled, if you want to get to a place where you're, you're able to give way more than you ever thought possible, and uh, as a result, attract much more, if you want to live a life of purpose and passion, go, go find out what your own values are. And your values are so cool. I know you you might have many different values, but about two years ago, three years ago, you created these awesome five values. Yeah, based right. based on that, uh, on on uh, um, Stephen Covey's and with with a twist, no. Stephen Covey's what his values? Book? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, so yeah. so what are those five values? To live, to love, to learn, to laugh, to live a legacy. <laughs> yeah. Amazing to live. To, to learn, love, to, no, live, to live, to love, to love, to learn, to learn, to laugh, to laugh, to leave a legacy. That would underline that one and to leave a legacy. Yeah. Amazing, very inspiring. Yeah. Francisco, gracias. Mi compadre, gracias. Compadre. Muchas gracias. 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 Thanks, guys.